Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to start a uh, multi-part lecture on the Vietnam War. Uh, Vietnam has, uh, you know, increasingly over the years uh, started to become more and more important in the Cold War. Uh, because of the uh, you know fear of the spread of communism domino theory uh, Vietnam is becoming more and more important as a stopgap measure to stop the spread of communism in Asia so uh, we're taking a look at a, a map here uh, you can see uh, over there is a world map the country of Vietnam is highlighted in red there for you. And just above us here, you can actually see a zoomed in version of, of Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam is, you know, has a, a pretty long history of warfare. Uh, the French have been there for a while. They're, you know, fighting a civil war and then eventually they'll leave and, and uh, you know, America will get more and more involved in Vietnam. Uh, it is, you know, a beautiful country. I think today there's a huge tourist market there because of the the food and you know the jungle and you know uh, the history uh, have made it a very kind of important place. Uh, but really, in you know the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, it's really only uh, strategically important because of uh, containment theory and and you know domino theory. So uh, just some quick, interesting uh, facts about the Vietnam War. Uh, it's the second longest war in American history. Uh, the war in Afghanistan has just recently surpassed uh, the Vietnam War. Uh, it's also the most unpopular war in American history, and we'll talk about that. Uh, during the war, 58,000 Americans lost their lives. This is very similar to the number of people who lost their lives during the Korean War, um, but it, this will be much more controversial. And we'll talk about why a little bit later. Uh, mostly has to do with uh, the media and the way the media is presenting it and uh, the civil rights movement and how uh, you know the civil rights movement will draw attention to the disproportionate number of African Americans and poor kids uh, that are uh, serving in this war. Uh, we're going to see 304,000 uh, wounded, uh, 75,000 uh, severely disabled, right? And in all, about $2 billion are going to be spent on the war. As a matter of fact, we're going to drop more bombs on Vietnam than we did the entire time uh, we fought in World War II. And so, you know, I mean, think about that. Like Vietnam is not an industrialized nation. You know, they've got a couple of major cities. Uh, very quickly in the war, we're going to bomb them into oblivion, and then we're just going to keep dropping the bombs uh, and essentially to blow up trails and mud huts. Uh, that's a gross oversimplification, by the way, but it, it kind of gives you the right message. And so this will be a very, very expensive war. So uh, why did the United States get involved in Vietnam? Well, because of domino theory. You know, you see uh, domino theory becoming a, a thing. Uh, you know, it's during the very beginning stages of the Cold War. China falls. Uh, when you see China falls, then we've got North Korea and then North Vietnam. And so its neighbors are turning communist. And so there's a lot of people that really believe that if we don't draw the line somewhere, uh, the world will eventually uh, fall to communism. And so, uh, you know, the Kennedy administration later, the Eisenhower uh, administration, or I should say the Eisenhower administration, and then later the Kennedy administration, and then the Johnson administration are going to draw the line in the sand at Vietnam. So uh, the conflict is older than just America. The Vietnam used to be a French colony. And so the French controlled uh, Vietnam for a very long time. And the uh, Vietnamese have become resentful of that. And so uh, some of their freedom fighters are, are being led by uh, a guy by the name of Ho Chi Minh. And, you know, uh, Ho Chi Minh really is this, uh, you know, very strong leader. He is a, a nationalist, right? So he's very pro uh, Vietnam. And, uh, you know, he wants Vietnam to be its own liberated country. And, and the French, you know, post-World War II are trying to hold on to their status in the world. They're trying to hold on to their empire and they don't want to let it go. And so the two sides uh, really end up clashing and fighting. Uh, 
Uh, Ho Chi Minh will turn to uh, try and find support uh, to be able to fight the French. He's going to get support from both the Soviets and the Chinese. Uh, both those countries are communist, and Ho Chi Minh uh, is as well. And so uh, they're going to be help f funding the Vietnamese in their guerrilla warfare against the French, right? Guerrilla warfare is a hit and run tactics. Well, eventually, because of the equipment that they're getting from uh, other communist nations, the communists led by Ho Chi Minh are going to be able to surround uh, the French fort at a place called Dien Bien Phu. Uh, when they're surrounded, we're going to see a 57-day siege of the French at Dien Bien Phu. And, uh, you know, where it's 40,000 communists have surrounded the fort. They've, they've got artillery from these other communist nations. And they're just going to uh, bombard the French until uh, the French uh, are essentially forced to surrender. And so this is the, you know, the French stronghold is at Dien Bien Phu. And so in 54, France is going to be forced to leave. Uh, when they leave, because America is still believing in the, the idea of containing communism, uh, it, this is when America is really going to step up to try and, uh, you know, make sure that communism doesn't spread in the region. Uh, one of the ways this is going to happen is through the uh, 1954 Geneva Peace Accords. And so you've got a situation where communists uh, are in control primarily in the north, right? And so the communist stronghold is mostly in the north uh, of Vietnam. But, uh, you know, they're, they're expanding. And so uh, we've got to decide, well, what are we going to do with Vietnam? Well, the international community essentially steps in and says, you know what? Uh, we'll divide the country in half at the 17th parallel. Very similar to what uh, we learned in uh, the uh, lecture on the Korean War. And so the 17th parallel, uh, the North is going to essentially be given to Ho Chi Minh, uh, and uh, the South uh, is uh, going to be, uh, we're going to see that the Western powers are essentially going to be in control in the South here, and they're going to establish both sides, North and South, will establish their own kind of temporary governments. And then uh, in 1956, so in two years, once both sides kind of settle in, then there are supposed to be elections to reunify the country. Now, both sides, everybody kind of agrees on this, right? So we've got uh, the Americans, the Soviets, the Chinese, Great Britain, France, all the, the like security council members, the biggest powers in the world, uh, agree to this. And both sides really agree to it because the Western side thinks like, well, look, we'll set up a democracy in the South. It'll flourish. The people in the North will see that. They'll want to be democratic. We'll hold elections. Well, in the North, they're like, well, we're not going to allow free elections. So we'll just, yeah, we'll rig them and we'll win. And so both sides are kind of convinced that they're going to win. And so we establish uh, this, uh, you know, Northern government which is communist, and this Southern uh, government, which isn't. And in two years, they'll have an election and that will solve the problem. We're convinced we're going to win the, you know, we as Americans are convinced uh, that the country will unite under a uh, capitalist democracy. So uh, the, that ain't going to be how it's going to work out, right? Ho Chi Minh is uh, very popular. You know, he is able to sell to the Vietnamese people uh, that there needs to be land reform, right, that the, the French didn't allow. And so, you know, giving uh, the peasants, you know, redistribution, redistribution of land to the peasants. Uh, and uh, he essentially just says, look, I mean, we're, we don't want to have any puppet governments, right? Uh, Vietnam should be for the Vietnamese. And not for some Western powers uh, to, uh, you know, manipulate us. And so it becomes increasingly clear uh, that if we actually make it to uh, having free and fair elections, that Ho Chi Minh is probably going to win. And so the United States, right, and this is one of the, like, you know, America so far since World War II has really been a force for good in the world. We've made some mistakes, right? We've supported some dictators in Latin America, Central America, uh, in like Iran, right? We, we definitely made mis some mistakes, but for mo the most part, uh, you know, after World War II, America has been a, a pretty significant force for good in the world. Uh, 
this is going to be another pretty decent sized mistake that America makes. Uh, we are going to uh, prevent the elections because we know that the communists are going to win. And so uh, I say it's a mistake um, just in the sense that it does go against our philosophy as Americans, you know, self-determination that people should choose their own governments. And we are going to step on that a little bit here because the, you know, all the indications are that if we would have allowed these elections, the communists would have won. Well, that's self-determination. That is democracy, right? And so uh, we're going to kind of squash democracy uh, in the effort to promote democracy. Hmm, seems weird. So um, we will set up a new nation in the South. Uh, and so uh, we'll, the, the leader is going to be a guy by the name of Diem. Uh, and we're going to uh, make him the leader of the South. Now, initially, Diem, in the very beginning of his presidency, does some good, right? He's going to build a decent infrastructure, roads, bridges, modernize the country that way. He's really going to push uh, education. He is... Uh, absolutely opposed to communism. That's why we like him and kind of help him get come to power. Uh, he's a Catholic, very strongly Catholic. Uh, and so, uh, you know, America, you know, kind of has a love-hate relationship with Catholicism. Kennedy's not elected yet, you know, so we haven't kind of got over our kind of distrust of Catholics, but he's Christian. And so, uh, you know, we really like the fact that there would be a Christian leader in Asia, right, uh, and promotes those Christian values. And so we kind of support DM. And initially, we're going to see some economic success there. But the problem is uh, that DM is corrupt. And so he's going to appoint his buddies to positions of power. They're going to be stealing uh, from the government and from the people. It's, it's a pretty corrupt situation, and that's bad. He's going to start to persecute uh, minorities within South Vietnam, uh, uh, Vietnam, particularly the Buddhist monks, right? He's Catholic. He wants to force uh, the conversion of those Buddhist monks. So he's going to tear down their temples uh, and try and, you know, just make life really bad for these monks. He's going to arrest them uh, and throw them in jail just for, you know, being Buddhist. And so, you know, we're, uh, we as Americans, we don't like that. We don't support it, but we're kind of willing to look the other way because at least he's not communist, uh, which they, you know, the communists, essentially throw everybody who believes in any kind of religion in jail or they or persecute them in one way, shape, or form. So we figure like, well, DM's a little bit better than that, so we'll accept it. Uh, but the also, the other problem is he becomes very paranoid, DM does. And uh, so he starts to uh, throw his political rivals in prison uh, and starts to, you know, like actually like starts to build camps to, to lock up political prisoners. At this point, I, I don't think you can call him and his government a democratic government, right? And so we start to realize that there are problems with the, the DM administration. Um, the Buddhist monks will start to protest this oppression, the destruction of their temples, the fact that they're being arrested and fined. Uh, and they'll do that through a process called self-immolation. Uh, what they'll do is they'll go out to a crowded street uh, and uh, just sit down in the, the middle of the street, douse themselves with gasoline and light themselves on fire. Uh, that's what you see right there. Uh, and, you know, the DM administration just kind of ignores it. And, and these images are being shown on the nightly news. And so the average American is going to start to turn against uh, DM at this point, too, because, I mean, that's awful, you know, that, and how bad. And in the Western mind, it's like, how bad must the situation be and how bad must the persecution be that people are willing to light themselves on fire to protest that? I mean, it, like, uh, it, it must be really bad. And so there's this huge outcry against uh, DM and, uh, you know, a series of uh of different generals are going to essentially go to the Americans and say, can we have a coup and get rid of this guy? Uh, we'll essentially say, uh, yes, uh, you know, you can do that. And, uh, you know, DM will be kicked out of power. He'll also be murdered. But we talked about that in a, a, a previous uh, lecture uh, under the so uh, these Buddhist monks, uh, nuns, business people, intellectuals, and peasants are really starting to turn against Diem, which uh, is going to give Ho Chi Minh in the north 
a fertile recruiting ground to uh, try and convert some of the Southern peasants to the communist uh, movement. And so you're going to start to actually see, uh, you know, people in the South turning against the democratic capitalist uh, government. Uh, and like I said, it's going to be images like this uh, that are really going to make all of the difference. Um, that is where we're going to leave off today with part one of Vietnam. It's just the establishment of the two sides of the governments uh, on those two sides. Uh, the next lecture will pick up with uh, the National Liberation Front, uh, the 1961 White Paper, the strategic Hamlet system, uh, pros and cons of that. Uh, and uh, you know the gradual escalation of American involvement in Vietnam. Thank you very much for your time. Have a wonderful day.